So hi everyone and welcome to this video on third degree price discrimination. In particular, we're going to do an example of it using calculus. So we're going to apply all the concepts that we've learned over the past two videos, uh, which is all about third degree price discrimination, and we're going to apply it to some actual example. So suppose a monopolist sells its products into two separable and identifiable markets in which the first market, or in this case, the first group, has a demand function equal to this, and the second group has a demand function equal to this one. Okay, so that's uh, 50 minus 5Q1 and 30 minus 2Q2, where uh, Q is the quantity demanded for each good in a particular market, and P is the price charged in that market. And the total cost of the firm is equal to 6 plus 10Q, where Q is equal to total output, which is just the sum of the output for the two particular markets. So we're going to be faced with a series of questions which are chained. So we'll answer them one by one. So the first thing that's asked is, if the monopolist can engage in third degree price discrimination, we need to find the profit maximizing price and output level for each market. And then we're going to uh, determine what's the total profit at that, uh, at that profit maximizing combination of output and price. So if you recall, okay, the condition that we need to, uh, that we need to uh, use, uh, which is the FOC that satisfies for, uh, for a maximum profit, is that the marginal revenue of group 1, okay, Q1, should be equal to the marginal cost. Q, as well as the marginal revenue of group two should be equal to the marginal cost, right? So those are the two FOCs that we need to use. So we have here our demand function. So we need to get revenue first. So using a P1 is equal to 15 minus 5Q1. So we're going to get revenue one first. So that's equal to 50 minus 5Q1 times Q1. So that's 50Q minus 5, uh, sorry, Q1 minus 5Q1 squared, right? And if we get the marginal revenue of that with respect to uh, marginal revenue, that's just uh, dr1 the, uh, with respect to Q1, which is equal to 50 minus uh, 10 Q1, right? So we have that marginal revenue function. Then for P2, equal to 30 minus 2q2 okay that's equal to um r2 which is equal to 30 minus 2q2 times q2 so we're going to get 30q2 minus 2q2 squared and we can get marginal revenue 2 q1 that's q2 of dr2 over dq2 that's just going to be equal to 30 minus 4q2 right so that's the marginal revenue for the second market or for the second group then we have our cost function so we need to also get marginal cost and it's the same again for both groups so that's 10 q plus 6 to get the marginal cost uh q that's just equal to the derivative of your cost function with respect to q and that's just equal to 10. okay so that's just some constant marginal cost therefore we can write the two FOCs, so your FOCs can be written as uh, the first one, so that's MR1, so that's uh, 50 minus 10Q1, that's equal to marginal cost, which is 10. Then the second one is equal to, um, that's 30 minus 2Q2, that's equal to 10 as well. And what we can do is uh, we can solve for this, uh, we can solve for this, and what we'll know is we can get, uh, so for example, for the first one, so 50 uh, minus 10 equal to 10 Q1. So that's 40 equal to 10 Q1. Okay, divide both sides by 10. We get Q1 star is equal to 4. Okay, because that's equal to 4. The second one is uh, the same. So that's uh, 30 minus 10 equal to 2 Q2. So that's going to be 20 equal to 2Q2. Divide both sides by 2. You get Q2 star is equal to uh, 
that's going to be equal to 20 divided by, uh, I'm sorry, this is going to be the over 4, okay, so this is not 2, sorry, that's equal to 4, okay, so that's, uh, divide everything by 4, we get Q2 star is equal to 5, okay, so we have our quantities, we now need our prices, because again, the prices will vary for each group, so the prices for group 1, so for group 1, for uh, group 1, so that's P1 is equal to, we just substitute it back to the demand function. So that's 50 minus 5 times Q1, which is 4. So that's 50 minus 20. That's going to be equal to 30, which is equal to P1. Okay. Next for group 2. Okay. For group 2, that's P2 is equal to uh, 30 minus uh, 2, uh, 2. Uh, Q2, so that's 2 times 5, so that's going to be equal to P2, is equal to uh, 20. So we have that. Okay, and uh, we need to compute for the firm's total profit. Okay, so the total profit is essentially, uh, again, as we said, the profit is equal to R1 plus R2, okay, R2 minus the cost. Okay, so that's uh, that's going to be equal to, okay, R1, that's just going to be equal to um, 30. Okay, 30 is the the price for uh, market 1 times the quantity, which is 4, plus R2 is equal to 20, okay, 20 times uh, the quantity, which is 5, minus the cost. So that's uh, minus 6 minus uh, 10 times Q, uh, wherein that's Q1 plus Q2, so that's times 9. So we're going to be left with 30 times 4, that's 120, plus 20 times 5, that's 100, minus 6, minus 90. So this will be equal to, uh, we're going to get uh, plus 10, then we can simplify this as uh, plus 4. So the total profit in this case is 124 okay so that's the profit under third degree price discrimination so we have our quantities there and our prices and note okay it means that for this case that uh the market of good one okay for the i'm sorry the market of of group one is less price sensitive than the market for good two which because the price of good one uh, of group one is higher than the price of group so we have that. Next, we need to verify that the demand for uh, the firm's product is less, uh, uh, the demand for the firm's product is less elastic in one market or in the market that uh, is charged with the higher price. So we need to verify essentially that in this case, since we said that um, P1 is higher than P2, so we need to prove that the elasticity of market one is lower okay, than the elasticity of uh, market two or, or group two. So if you recall, price elasticity is equal to negative of the partial of quantity with respect to PI times PI over QI. And what you'll notice is since we're, we have a demand function which is inverse, right? It's with respect to P, uh, P as a function of Q. We can rewrite this as negative 1 over the partial of PI over partial QI times PI over QI. Right. And uh, let's solve for it. So for market one, for market one, okay, so that's elasticity P1, okay, this is equal to uh, negative one over, if we derive the demand function, so, so if you recall the demand function of group one, that's equal to, um, so that's P1 is equal to 50 minus 5Q1. If you derive that one, okay, with respect to Q, so that's partial PI with respect to QI, okay, uh, th that's going to, uh, so let's just write the notation down, okay. This will be equal to, if you derive that one with respect to Q1, okay, that will be equal to negative 1 over 5. So this one is that 5 there times uh, the price that is charged in that market. So that's going to be 30 all over the quantity in that market, which is 4. 
and we're going to be left with 1.5. And we do the same procedure for market 2. So note, in market 2, P2 is equal to 30 minus 2 Q2. So for market 2 or group 2, okay, uh, I'm using them interchangeably. So that's EP2, that's equal to negative 1 over partial PI over partial QI times PI over QI. That's going to be negative 1 over. If we derive uh, this function here with respect to Q2, we get uh, uh, 2. Okay, we get 2. Uh, actually, negative 2, but then the negative is there. Times uh, the quantity for that market, which is going to be equal to 20 all over 5. Okay, so negative, negative. Yes, we forgot that. And that will be equal to 2, right? We add the negative sign so that in absolute value terms, it's always going to be positive. And what we notice is, indeed, the elasticity of market 1 is less than the elasticity of market 2, which means that the demand in market 1 is less elastic than the demand in market 2. Hence, the price that is charged in market 1 is higher than the price that is charged in market 2. So next... Assume now that it's illegal for the monopolist to price discriminate, i.e. it can't uh, charge two separate prices. So it can only charge a single price on both markets. What we need to do is we need to derive the market demand uh, curve equation faced by the monopolist. And let's find the firm's profit maximizing price and output at that case. So what we'll notice is if there's just one price, okay, P1 is equal to P2 is equal to P because we can't have a separate price for two markets and the quantity that will be produced, okay, it's just going to be some uh, combination of Q1 plus Q2. So now, okay, let uh, P1 is equal to P2 is equal to P. Uh, then what we can do is we can rewrite the firm's demand function. So initially for group one, it was P1s, but since we have a, a one price, that's P. That's equal to 50 minus 5Q1, but uh, uh, minus 5Q1, okay. Uh, then that's for uh, market one, market one. Then for market two, it's going to change to uh, P again, because we can only have one price, 30 minus 2Q2. I'm uh, sorry, that's 2Q2. Then we can rewrite both, okay, as uh, Q1, okay. Q1 is equal to 10 minus 1 over 5P. Then Q2 is equal to 15 minus 1 over 2P, right? And uh, we can get the total market demand as just the sum of these two. So we just add. So that's 10 minus 1 over 5P plus 15 minus 1 over 2P, right? And we're going to get uh, uh, the term which is... Uh, 25, uh, okay, so that's going to be Q is equal to uh, 25, okay, 25 minus, uh, if we take the LCD, that's going to be over 10, so that's going to be 7 over 10P. Then what we want is we want to express it as an inverse demand function, so we transpose 7 over 10P, so that's 7 over 10P equal to uh, 25, minus Q, then we multiply both sides by 10 over 7 to cancel it out. So we get P is equal to, um, that's going to be 250 over 7 minus uh, 10 over 7 Q. So this is our demand function that we're going to end up using. And what we're going to do to be able to solve for the profit maximizing uh, quantity and price is to use our condition MR is equal to MC. So that's our FOC. MR equals MC. So revenue, okay, revenue is going to be equal to, um, uh, that's going to be equal to uh, this price. So that's 250 over 7 minus 10 over 7Q times uh, Q. So we're going to be uh, left with 250 over 7Q minus 10 over 7Q squared. Then to get marginal revenue, we're just going to derive this function with respect to Q. So that's going to be equal to 250 over 7 minus uh, 20 over 7 Q. 
right? Then we can equate that to a uh, marginal cost, okay? So again, marginal cost is the same and that's 10. So MR is equal to MC, so that's 250 over seven minus 20 over seven Q equal to 10. And we can isolate out Q, so that's 250 over seven minus 10 equal to 20 over seven Q. And we can get from this that Q star is equal to nine. Okay, so we get that. Uh, that and then what we do is we plug that into this function here or your demand function. So that's P is equal to 250 over seven minus 10 over seven times nine. And what we get is our price, which is P star is equal to 22.86. Okay. And uh, those things there are the profit maximizing output and price when a single price is charged. So we're also asked for the maximum profit under this case. And that's simple. That's just going to be equal to revenue. Okay, so that's 9 times 22.86 less the cost, right? Our cost, uh, our cost uh, in this case is going to be equal to... So that's minus uh, 10Q, right? So 10 times 9, okay, plus 6. Okay, and we're going to be left with a profit equal to 109.74. Okay, so 109.74. Then the last question just compares the two cases that we've tried. So uh, how much extra profit does the monopolist earn with third degree price discrimination? So if you recall... Uh, the first in our first slide, the profit of the monopoly under first degree price discrimination is one twenty four. Under a single price, it's one hundred nine point seventy four. So, the change in the profit or the difference in the profit, so that's one twenty four. This is from third degree, so that's from third degree price discrimination, minus a uh, one hundred nine point seventy four. That's in a single price single price, uh, that's going to be equal to 14.26. Therefore, the monopolist okay, gains an extra 14.26 because it can uh, use or practice third degree price discrimination. So I hope you were able to get uh, that example. It's quite a lengthy example, but it's all the pr procedure we needed for third degree price discrimination. So this officially ends our discussion on uh, price discriminations. And in the next video, we'll start our discussion on oligopolies. So thank you and see you in the next video.